Angular 18 is out now and the support for Zoneless is available in its initial form. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take an Angular 17 application and migrate it to Angular 18, turn on Zoneless, compare the difference of behavior between an application based on zones and a new Zoneless Angular 18 application, show you the tricks that you need to know to migrate to Zoneless, and I'm also going to cover all the other extra features that are made available in Angular 18. Welcome back to the Angular University channel, I'm Vasco. So as you're going to see, migrating to Zoneless is way easier than it sounds. Let's take here this plain Angular 17 application that is currently using zones. And let's confirm that indeed it uses zones. And after that, we're going to migrate it to zoneless and Angular 18. So to make sure that your application uses zones, just check for the presence of the global zone object. As you can see, this application is zone based. I'm not using here on push change detection. I have created here three simple change detection scenarios, a plain counter, an interval counter that is being updated here via set interval, and an observable counter that is being pushed to the template via an observable. So if we check here the template, we are printing out the plain counter. The plain counter will increment when we click on this increment plain counter button, as you can see here. The interval counter is going to be incremented every second, as you can see here via set interval. And finally, the observable counter is being pushed to the template using the async pipe. So let's now quickly migrate this to zoneless and compare what happens in this free typical change detection scenario. In order to migrate to zoneless, first upgrade to Angular 18 using the following command. This is going to take a moment to process. I will return when the installation is completed. All right, so a few updates were made in package.json and now we are being asked the question, use the application builder. I'm going to hit space to say that, yes, I want to use it. And this is going to run here a couple of migrations. And now this application is running on Angular 18. To confirm this, let's go ahead and let's hit ng-serve. And this is going to build the application that, as we can see, is now running here on Angular 18 and everything is still working as before, as expected, because we are still using zones. So just because you migrate to Angular 18 does not mean that you are using zoneless. Let's now modify our application and turn it into a zoneless application. For that, we need to do a couple of modifications. So first, let's go here to our application configuration. And here in your providers, you're going to add the following provider, provide experimental zoneless change detection. Now, the zoneless change detection is marked as experimental. I'm going to talk about a bit the currently known limitations, but I think that for a lot of applications, this initial version of zoneless will be more than enough. The next step is to head over to angular.json and here we are going to search for the zone.js polyfill and we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove it. Now, the last step, and this is very important, you need to stop your Angular CLI and you need to run it again. Otherwise, the new version of angular.json would not be applied to your application. Now, let's confirm that this is indeed zoneless. I'm going to head over here to the console and let's try to print out just like we did before the global zone object. And this time around, we have here zone is not defined. So this application here is effectively zoneless. So let's have a look to see what happened. You might have here the illusion that everything is still working like before. That is not exactly the case. So let's simplify this and let's go each use case at a time. Let's start here with the plain counter. So as you can see, when you increment the plain counter, this is still working correctly as expected. So what is happening here is that the zoneless detects that a click handler is clicked on a button and that is going to trigger a change detection run. So in that sense, everything works like default change detection or on push 
This has always worked in all change detection modes. All sorts of event handlers that are binded here in the Angular template using the rounded parentheses syntax will trigger change detection as usual, also in zoneless. Now let's have a look at the behavior here of our observable counter. So I'm going to move this up and we are going to uncomment this and see the behavior. So as you can see, after application refresh, the observable counter is still working correctly as expected. So the fact that we are using the async pipe to push data to the template, that is going to trigger zoneless change detection. Or in other words, it's going to inform Angular that some data has changed in this component and this component has been marked as dirty and Angular knows that it needs to update it. All right, so, so far so good. This pretty much works like default change detection and even on push, this is standard behavior of Angular. Now let's go ahead and let's carefully comment out this interval here to avoid having our application continuously trigger change detection due to this interval and let's inspect this interval counter separately. All right, so what is going on here? So as you can see, this interval counter, even though it's currently being updated every second and incremented, this is not getting reflected here in our template. So because this interval counter is not being fed to the template using something like the async pipe, there is no way for zoneless change detection to know that this counter is being changed. The same thing would happen with set timeout, for example. There would also be no way for zoneless change detection to know that a value has been changed in those circumstances as well. So how could we fix this? Well, we can head over here to our zoneless application and we need to somehow here, when we increment our counter, we need to notify Angular and inform it that a change has happened in the data of this component. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to inject here the change detector ref and with it, we are going to go ahead and we're going to notify Angular. So I'm going to access here change detection ref and we're going to say here mark for check. And now this time around, if we try this, we're going to see that the counter is being correctly updated in the user interface as expected. Now using change detector ref might sound like a clever trick, but I don't recommend this approach. I think that instead it's much better to use signals because it's really not that practical to use change detector ref everywhere in your application. Imagine that you have to call this after every HTTP call. Well, you could put it in an interceptor, etc. But I'm going to show you what I think is a better way, which is to instead use signals. So let's go ahead and let's turn this interval counter into a signal. Let's provide it its initial value. And here, let's refactor this to update the signal. So it's going to be counter equals counter plus one. So now we have performed here the update of the counter. And now don't forget, head over here to the template. And this is now a signal. You have to invoke it. Otherwise, this won't work as expected. And this time around, as expected, without having to resort to change detector ref, you have here the interval counter working correctly as expected. And this is in general the recommended solution for working with zoneless change detection, which is to prefer to use signals. So for example, when you are doing an HTTP call and you want the data after the HTTP call to be reflected in the user interface, push the data into a signal and consume that signal in your templates and everything will work perfectly. And that was the main new feature of Angular 18, zoneless change detection in an initial version. Now let's with rapid fire cover the other features that you have available uh, going on with ng content and Angular content projection. You now have default fallback content for your ng content slots. So let me show you here an example. I've created here a course card component that takes in here as a configurable ng content input 
a title, in this case an H2 tag with the class title, and we can see the course card printed out here to the screen. Now let's have a look here at the content. We can see the component and we are using here ng content. We are using here a content projection slot. We are currently checking here for an element in the content part with the class title and then we are projecting it here at this place in the template. Now one thing that we did not have so far was the possibility of defining here default content in case that we chose not to provide here any initial value for the title projection slot. But now this is working. So as you can see, we now have default content available for ng content. You might have noticed here this error message. Please disregard this. It's just that WebStorm is not fully up to date yet. And you might be curious, why does this look like Visual Studio Code? Well, I know that I'm going to get that question in the comments. So I'm using the Visual Studio Code dark modern theme. So you get the best of both worlds. You get WebStorm with the beautiful VS Code theme. Now let's go ahead and let's cover our next feature of Angular 18, which is going to be the new forms observable for reactive forms. So let's say that you have here a reactive form in your application. You now have here this new events observable that you can subscribe to. And this is going to report all the events that are happening in the form. So let me show you here. I'm going to open here another tab and let me go ahead and let me load the application. Let's quickly use here the console and let me go ahead and let me open here the form and from here I'm going to start creating here some events in the form. We can see that already here some events occurred. So such as for example, when the value was initially set, when the form became valid. And now if I select here another value, we have a touch change event. We have here uh, another event, for example, when we provide here another value here for this input, we can see here all the events that are currently being fired internally in our form. We can subscribe to them and react to them using this new events observable. Next up and the final feature that we're going to cover or one of the final features, the possibility of using a function here in redirect to when configuring routes in Angular 18. So before redirect to could only take a string. Now, if you want to redirect based on some parameters, such as for example, on a router parameter or even a query parameter in the URL, you can return here a string with the URL that you want to redirect to. In our case, we have here the lessons menu entry that is going to be redirected to the login page. And finally, to complete our coverage of Angular 18, we have available here a new version of Angular Material that is compatible with server-side rendering, with client hydration, and that follows the Angular Material free specification. So you will notice that the components are slightly different than before. And if you want to learn Angular in detail, check out my courses at the Angular University. I'm currently finishing up my latest course, which is the Modern Angular with Signals course that you can find here. Already many hours of content are here available, even though the course is not fully completed. This covers how to build a modern Angular application from A to Z using signals. And with this, I hope that you enjoyed this coverage of Angular 18. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this release if you are planning to migrate to Zoneless. Thank you so much for watching everyone and I will see you next time.